Hi, I'm Gary Bambridge, and this is another of my tips for travelers. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about the nine things that you need to know about Voyage to Antiquities Aegean Odyssey, including what's good and what's not so good. Subscribe to the channel, and every week you'll be alerted to let you know there's another video packed full of great travel tips, advice, and inspiration. First of all, Aegean Odyssey is the only cruise ship sitting at the time of recording this that's part of the cruise line Voyage to Antiquity, which is really aimed around exploring the historical, the archaeological, the natural world, and the history of the various ports that it calls on. It was originally built as a ferry, but was converted in 1988 into a cruise ship, has over the years been reworked, remodeled, and substantially improved, and it's constantly going through dry docks. Well, it's quite a small ship. There's seven passenger decks, and altogether it normally cruises with around about 350 guests. There's just over 200 cabins. The third important thing is that it's a very traditional ship. So it looks like an old-style passenger ship, not one of the new, modern, more apartment block type cruise ships. Inside, though, it has been significantly updated, modernized, and is constantly being refreshed and improved. But of course, being a smaller ship, that does mean it has fewer facilities and less choice. So let's explore what it actually has on board. In terms of dining, there are two main venues. The first of these is the Terrace Cafe. This is the more informal dining area, which is a buffet and also has a really nice outdoor deck. So particularly if you're selling in nice, warm climates, it's great to sit out on the Terrace deck. This is open for breakfast, for lunch, for afternoon tea, and for dinner. The more formal dining restaurant is the Marco Polo, and this is open for lunch and for dinner. Depending on the cruise, it may also be open for breakfast. It's a waiter-served restaurant. This is a restaurant that people tend to dress up much more for. So you'll find in the evening, gentlemen will often wear a jacket or certainly a long sleeve shirt, and ladies will dress up a little bit smarter. There is no formal dress code on the Aegean Odyssey. So in the day, people tend to be much more casual, but in the evenings, people do tend to dress up if they're going to dinner in the Marco Polo. In the evening, there's also normally some light bites, and they're normally in the Charleston Bar. There are four lounges or bars on board. The largest of all is known as the Ambassador Lounge. This is the main meeting point on board. It's where all of the enrichment lectures are held. It's where in the evenings there might be some shows or cabaret if they're on. Things like the Captain's Welcome Party is also held in here. It's a very large room. It can hold everybody on board so it can seat more than 350 people very comfortably at one time. Just along from that is the Charleston Bar. This is the most popular bar on board. A lot of people will meet here for evening drinks and also before and after dinner. Often performing here, you'll have either the classical trio will perform in here, or there might be a duo. It's also where in here they hold things like the morning daily quiz. Higher up the ship is the observation lounge. Now, occasionally during some cruises, this is used if there's a very big group on board. If it's not being used by a group, it's the venue where people go and play things like bridge. The outside bar is the Lido bar. Again, very popular when sailing through warmer climates, and it has a great view over the pool deck. Now, in terms of fitness and spa, you've got the pool deck with a pool, which is a saltwater pool. There is the Athena Spa on board. Now, in the Athena Spa, you have the small gym area, which has some machines and free weights. And then, of course, you have the spa area where you have your normal treatments. There's also, separate to the Athena Spa, a hair salon. There are also occasionally some classes held, and the classes will be held in the Ambassador Lounge. In terms of other facilities on board, there's a library. It's quite a large library room, which has lots of books, reference books. This is also where you'll have the various daily quizzes, and there's lots of magazines and brochures in here as well. Of course, as you'd expect, there's the normal facilities, like you've got your reception, your guest services, and your shore excursions desk. There's also a shop which sells everything from branded merchandise, clothing, jewelry, and of course, essential supplies. There is no photography center, and there's no onboard photographer taking pictures all the time. There is no guest laundry on board, so if you do need washing or laundry done, then you have to send that away. Now, in terms of accommodation, as I mentioned, there's just over 200 cabins, and these range from inside cabins right through to owner's suites. There are not many balcony cabins on board, so less than a quarter of the cabins will have a balcony. The great thing, though, there's lots of cabins for solo travelers, and you'll find these at all different levels and grades. 
Now, the upper tier of cabins are known as the balcony grade cabins, and they have a whole lot of different features. So, for example, they'll have things like a welcome champagne and fruit, they'll have daily canapes, molten brown toiletries, dressing gowns, and slippers. Sort of the areas that I think are probably less good on board the ship. Well, one of them is Wi Fi. So, the Wi Fi, certainly at the time of recording, is not great. It's not ship wide. There are certain hotspots around, and it seems that the bandwidth is relatively low. So, there's a lot of people who want to go and connect, and you'll find that the Wi Fi is pretty poor. So, that's one area that probably over time hopefully will improve. The second area is, as you've probably seen, the gym and the spa area is quite small. Now, because Voyages to Antiquity and the Aegean Odyssey are attracting people who want to go out and experience things and see things, the passenger mix tends to be slightly older but is very active because you have to be to go on the excursions. And one of the things I found is I would go to the gym a couple of times and because it's so small, it was completely full. So hopefully over time the gym facilities will grow and expand to really address the needs of the more active traveler who's going out and wants to be connected much more and does want much more fitness facilities. The Aegean Odyssey, as you can see, is a very classic ship. It's a relatively old ship, but it's been constantly improved and updated, and certainly inside it is in really great condition because it's constantly refreshed. But it is a much more traditional cruising ship and a much more traditional cruising look and feel. And all of the cruisers on board are very much focused on education and enrichment, and the passenger profile does tend to be a little bit older, but very interested in going on vacations where they learn. The fares on the Aegean Odyssey are pretty all-inclusive, so your accommodation, your food, your gratuities, your excursions, and drinks with dinner are all included in the fare. So extras tend to be things like Wi-Fi, gratuities if you're buying drinks outside of the evening meal, and obviously discretionary spend in the shop or in the spa. If you found this helpful, please watch many more of my Tips for Travelers videos because you'll get much more inspiration, advice, and tips to help you make more of your precious travel time and money. Thank you.